Despite the economy recording positive growth this week, the Coalition says the good news is down to export earnings rather than consumer spending. But the national accounts haven't been the only point of contention in Parliament this week. The opposition looks likely to continue its attack on the Defence Minister Joel Fitzgibbon today after calling for his dismissal earlier this week when he failed to declare a gift of free accommodation. For more, Opposition Treasury Spokesman Joe Hockey joins us now from Canberra. Joe Hockey, good morning. Good morning, Joe. Now, these figures yesterday totally undermine your whole attack over the past couple of months, don't they? <laughs> no. No, of course not. Nice try, but no. <laughs> uh, the fact of the matter is uh, the numbers are going to bounce around. There's no doubt about that. All the numbers are bouncing around. Unemployment, uh, to some degree the national accounts, uh, and, and you know a whole lot of data out there. There is one consistent uh, piece of information, that is that Kevin Rudd, has $315 billion of debt, and someone is going to have to pay that. Uh, and ultimately, it is the taxpayers. So, you know, the numbers will bounce around, there's no doubt about that. The headline number was good yesterday, it was great. Uh, and that's exactly what I think, you know, we should all be welcoming. But having said that, uh, let's look into the data, and any uh, serious analysis will illustrate that there was a 2.2% contribution to the quarterly GDP, the largest on record uh, from the fall in imports and the rise in exports. So, yeah, well, that, uh, that, was a look, that was a major factor. Let's, let's look at another yeah. factor. Uh, Treasury estimates the economy would have contracted by 0.2% had it not been for the cash handouts. <coughs> Access Economics is supporting that, that view as well. Surely now you have to concede that the stimulus payments have worked. Well, if you know, when you spend that much money, it is going to have an impact. You see, yesterday's debate, Joe, but that, was but that all about... But uh, that does undermine what you've been saying for the last couple no, of no, months. No, 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 the, no. There's this cash splash angle that you've been taking with it. It's been wrong, hasn't it? No, because we've always talked about money being wasted. If the money bought Kevin Rudd a positive figure this month, the question is, was it money well spent? And our argument, you know, yesterday's argument, even today's, is all about the depth of the hole. The fact is the hole exists. And at the bottom of the hole is a taxpayer. And how does a taxpayer get out of that hole? Well, it's going to be a damn sight harder with a whole lot of bricks of debt in the backpack. But the hole would, be, this the, is the hole, the hole would be the same size if you guys were in charge. Well, I mean, this is, a, this is a challenge. You know, it is about making decisions, about making decisions that give us the springboard to get out of this. One of the things that we, we cannot neglect in all of this debate is that uh, Australia's economic destiny is more closely linked with Asia uh, than it is with Europe and the United States. That's what yesterday proved, I think, in many ways. Now, what we do know is that when Asia comes out of this troubled time, it will come out faster and more aggressively uh, than many other places. And they will compete with us on taxation. Uh, they'll be our clients for minerals, but they'll compete with us on taxation. They'll compete with us on service delivery and a range of other things. If we have no petrol in the tank to be competitive, if we are increasing taxes and increasing interest rates, when in Singapore or Hong Kong or other parts of Asia they are cutting taxes or keeping their taxes low, uh, then we are going to face a very difficult recovery. So, as you say, these numbers keep bouncing around. You're still expecting there will be two quarters of negative growth. How, how soon will oh, that look, happen? Look, 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 Joe, you're putting words into my mouth. I don't know what the figures are going to be. No one does. Uh, quite frankly, uh, you know, we hope, we sure hope that we don't have two quarters of negative growth. But having said that, uh, there have been periods in the past when you've had a... Uh, negative quarter and then a positive quarter, the numerous negative quarters. Alternatively, there have been many times in Australia's modern history where we've had one negative quarter and continued to grow. Uh, so that's, it, it, they truly bounce around. We don't know where, where the numbers are going to go. What we do know is that unemployment is going to go up and people are going to lose their jobs. And if you look at Ross Gittins uh, this morning, uh, he said that, look, unemployment going up means we are in recession. So. You know, we can, we can argue the technicalities, but ultimately the, the bottom line is people will be losing their jobs. Right, yeah. Joel Fitzgibbon is back on the front pages this morning. What are you, your specific uh, problems with what seems to have happened in this instance? 
Uh, well, I think there has been a pattern of behaviour from the Defence Minister that is alarming. Uh, this is the man that is uh, responsible for protecting our nation. Ultimately, he is in charge of the nation's defences. Uh, if there is any hint of a security risk, if there is any hint of sloppiness, um, if there is any hint of inappropriate behaviour, then the Prime Minister should take the right decision. But Lin Lindsay, Ta Lindsay Tanner's been on the show this morning and he says he's met with the same man several times because he holds a prominent position in the insurance industry uh, and th he hasn't had any problems with the meetings he's had with him. Uh, what do, do you see any specific problems with this incident that has arisen? Well, uh, it's an obvious fit for the Finance Minister to meet with the, the head of NIB. Uh, it's an obvious fit for the Health Minister. It's an obvious fit for Joel Fitzgibbon to meet with his brother. The question is whether Joel Fitzgibbon facilitated, uh, by using his office, facilitated opportunities for his brother that others might not have got. Uh, and look, th these, are, these are issues that need to be explored. Okay, Joe Hockey in Canberra, thanks very much for talking to us this morning. Thanks, Joe. To the finance figures now, Australia